In this video, we'll be looking at all of Miss Marvel's costumes in Marvel's Avengers. This is the final video in my series looking at the costumes of the playable characters in this game. I've got all the videos in a playlist, so go and watch any of them that you might have missed. Subscribe too, I may be largely done with this game, but I'm not going to stop making stuff. So subscribe and make sure you don't miss out. This video's structure will be a little different. I usually start with the character's iconic suit, their canon suit within this game's world, and then I move up in rarity from that point on. With Kamala, she really only has two types of costumes, casual clothing and variations on her classic costume, so because of that, this video would be split into two sections, starting with her casual stuff and ending with her super suits. So let's start. The super fan outfit is Kamala's starting outfit in this game. It's a fairly standard combination of clothing items that works well enough. The shirt is, of course, a reference to Carol Danvers' Miss Marvel costume, and the scarf hanging out of Kamala's bag is foreshadowing for her final hero costume. It's decent like 5, 6 out of 10, somewhere there. There are recolors of this that reference the rest of the game's base roster. Just wanted to point that out. Dreamer is a slight variation of this outfit that is a unique model because they put a sash around the waist. This outfit is clearly inspired by Carol's Captain Marvel outfit, which is the closest you'll get to having her in this game. 6 out of 10. The outfit literally labeled casual is pretty much the same as Superfan, but this one doesn't have the scarf hanging out of the bag. Wowie. 5 out of 10. The Avengers Day outfit is a reference to A-Day, the game's inciting incident. I think this one is just kind of bizarre. First, why would you want to wear something that references the worst day in these Avengers history? And secondly, Kamala was there on A-Day, but she wasn't wearing this. So why does this outfit exist? It's not bad if you like the back-to-school look, but I'm not a fan. 5 out of 10. The co-pilot outfit is based off clothing Kamala would often wear in the comics. Not a fan of this one. I know it's not the intention, but I get homeless vibes from this. 5 out of 10. A recolor of this outfit called Avalanche has a picture of Lockjaw, the inhuman dog with teleportation powers. I still think it's hilarious how the Inhumans are the main reason this game's story even happens, but we never actually see any of the big name Inhuman characters in the story. Like, how do you even do that? Gym class is another bit of clothing inspired by what Kamala has worn in the books. It's fine. Something that I think is worth being pointed out, though, is that Crystal Dynamics misinterpreted what this outfit was. See, this is not a gym class uniform like the developers seem to think it is. This outfit is just average clothes Kamala owns. I think what happened was that the devs saw the images you see on screen where she's wearing this in a locker room next to other students wearing sports outfits, and concluded that this was a gym uniform. But what is actually happening in this scene is that Kamala's newly obtained powers are flaring up while she's in class, so she runs into the locker room to hide, where she is then found by the gym teacher and gym students. So yeah, regardless of any of that, it's another plain clothes style outfit. 5 out of 10. The Jersey Girl outfit is yet another outfit based on clothes Kamala has worn in the books. This is actually the first thing we see Kamala wear, and it's an outfit that shows up again several times in her comic series. I think this one's alright. It's got good colors, there's a symbol on the front. 7 out of 10. There are three recolors of this that reference Captain America, Iron Man, and Black Widow. Nothing for Thor and Hulk, though. The sleepover outfit is taken from an issue where Kamala has a sleepover with her pals. You can tell that her top isn't actually a pajama top, they've just recolored the jacket from Jersey Girl, so it doesn't quite look right. Her Wolverine slippers from the books have been replaced by Iron Man slippers, which really shows that this game started development back in 2016 when Marvel was downplaying the X-Men. It's especially hilarious now because Kamala is currently a mutant and a member of the X-Men. Going back to the suit, it's not the best adaptation, but TBH, it doesn't bother me that much because I personally wouldn't care if they got it right. It's just pajamas, dude. 6 out of 10. Sloth Baby is another casual outfit, but Kamala's got a little sloth hat. It's frequently stated that Kamala's online handle in the books, and the game as well, I believe, is Sloth Baby. So yeah, that's what this is a reference to. It's kinda funny, I, I guess? 6 out of 10. Throggy is a reference to the frog version of Thor called Throg. You'd think this kind of thing would be referenced with Thor and not an unrelated character like Miss Marvel, but whatever. Also kind of funny. 6 out of 10. Independence is another t-shirt skin, but this one has a vest over it. Vests are neat, but honestly, who cares? 6 out of 10. And that's all of her casual outfits. If you've been following my channel for a while, then you know I don't really like casual outfits in, in general, but when it comes to superhero games, I really, really don't like them because for me, playing a superhero game, I want to feel like a superhero, and part of that is looking like a superhero. So I don't want to be wearing normal clothes. If I wanted to wear normal clothes, I can just, you know, do that 
in real life. I don't really want to do that in a game. And I understand a lot of people, a lot of people have commented that they like the casual outfits because it gives that feeling of the hero being caught off guard. And I can, I could understand that if this was like an open world game or something, but the very structure of this game literally prevents that from being possible because every single mission you play, the Avengers get on the jet, they fly over there. So they're never unprepared. They're always prepared. So I just, I don't know, these casual outfits to me don't really serve a purpose. And I understand that, you know, variety is good. I understand having one or two would be good, but 11 casual costumes, most of which are just slight variations of the same t-shirt and capris? Like, what? Why? To me, it's just, it's so unnecessary to have this many casual costumes. And, you know, I think you can already tell that I don't like this character's overall costumes too much because half of them are just a genre of costume design that I do not care for. Fortunately for Kamala, I think her superhero suits are actually quite good, so let's go into her second section, the super suits. The DIY suit is a suit you get during the campaign, when Kamala puts it together herself as her prototype outfit. This is an example of something being too simple. During the campaign, I actually took this off when I got it and wore the default t-shirt instead. I get that some people would be like, oh, but the story, yeah, I don't care. It looks bad, 4 out of 10. The Greater Good suit is another prototype costume, this one actually being from the comics. This and the DIY suit are so funny to me because I can totally see the developers going, Wait, hold on, if we add a fanny pack, we can make this two costumes. It's just so lazy, man. Not a fan of this one, 5 out of 10. Kamala's iconic suit is the only iconic suit in the game that is an actual adaptation of the character's look, instead of being some completely different other thing. Well, except for maybe Black Widow, but even then. Kamala's Miss Marvel costume has always been a very good design. It's similar to several of Carol's costumes while still being its own thing. The colors are nice, I like the scarf since it makes her movements look more dynamic and it adds something to the outfit's back. It's a sort of costume that can be thrown into a comic book from 60 years ago or adapted into a realistic 3D space and it would fit well into both environments. This iconic suit is a faithful adaptation, making only a handful of changes to add a bit more detail. I really like the additional texture on the torso. So that looks nice. There are some parts that I don't love, like how the pants are the same capris Kamala wears in her casual outfits. Poor girl only has one pair of pants. And a way more minor thing is how there's this little button in the thunderbolt symbol on the chest. It's super small, you're not going to notice this in casual gameplay, but it bothers me. 8 out of 10. I mean, you could just put Velcro on the inside of the flap to hold the suit together. You don't need a button there. What's especially interesting about this suit is that despite being her canon appearance within this game's world, despite Kamala being the main character of the game, she never actually wears this suit in the game's story. There is no point where she receives this as her official suit, nor is there any point where she gets her hero name of Miss Marvel. If you follow me on Twitter, then you'll know that I recently read all of Miss Marvel's solo comics, so I'm a bit of a Kamala lore expert. And I could go on a 30 minute rant discussing why this game's version of Kamala is incredibly undercooked, but really all I have to do to prove that is point this out. A hero's name and costume are a big deal for any character, but they should mean a lot to Kamala specifically as they would be concrete symbols of her journey into becoming a hero, but these things are given to her off screen. There's a recolor of this called Suburban Rebel that has a similar color scheme to Carol's Miss Marvel suit. There are a few other costumes that have this black recolor to reference Carol's Miss Marvel costume. I, I don't feel like mentioning them all, so I'm just gonna mention this one. Another recolor of this is labeled Miss Marvel. That is a reference to the original Captain Marvel, a Kree soldier named Marvel. The trending outfit is another pass at her classic comic book costume. Now, you might be thinking, isn't this the exact same thing as the last costume we just saw? A fair question, but no, this is a different costume. The two biggest differences are that this suit's design is simpler overall, and it has the flared shoulders that the suit sometimes has in the books. This might come as a surprise, but I think the suit is a 10 out of 10. It's a good design from the books that was adapted perfectly. You literally could not make the suit look any better. The most interesting thing about this costume is that, despite being advertised prior to release, this suit was not actually available at launch. For some reason, it took like a year for the suit to be added in. Gosh, I hope someone got fired for that blunder. The Karachi suit is a reference to a quickly thrown together suit Kamala wore when she was visiting family in Karachi, a city in Pakistan. It's fine. I think the face covering is cool, but outside of that, I don't really care for the suit's design. 6 out of 10. The Advanced Suit is an original design that is... fine? 
I think it sacrifices a bit of Kamala's unique design traits in order to create a more standard superhero suit. This one is one of those suits that I think is completely redundant since there's no real reason to use it over the trending outfit or even the iconic suit. The model is a little different, sure, but not that different. The biggest differences are the colors, but even then, they're not that different. And it's not a design based off the books, so why is this here? 7 out of 10. The Stark Tech suit is the suit Kamala wore in the finale of the campaign during the Avengers' final assault against MODOK. This suit is built off the advanced suit, and as a result, it's essentially just that, but with added mechanical stuff. Another 7 for me. The Future suit is another original design that I think really highlights why I like the trending suit so much. There's so much crap on this costume, especially the legs. Look at all these nonsense lines. Look at how they made the mask into a pair of goggles for more realism. I'm honestly shocked the iconic suit turned out so well and wasn't something like this instead. All that being said, the suit is just okay. I was just saying how bad it would be if something like this was her default, since I think this one is a bit more like the other designs. As an alternate, it's harmless. 6 out of 10. Future Guardian is a suit based off an extremely short-lived alternate version of Kamala that appeared in the Cosmic Ghost Rider series. And when I say short-lived, I really mean it. The character existed for only a handful of pages before getting disintegrated by Galactus. She has Captain America's shield and color scheme, but she's called Captain Marvel, not Captain America, so whatevs. This game's version of the outfit is good enough. It's not a design I particularly care for, but they did a good job with it. Part of me wishes there was a version of this suit that had the shield on the back, but I also know it would look weird when she grows in size, so eh. Overall, this is a 7. The Power Gloves outfit is derived from this one variant cover. It's a good adaptation, especially since the devs had to create the lower body themselves since we don't see it on the cover and they did a good job matching it up with the rest of the suit. This one's cool, I really like it. It's got that cyberpunk kind of tech wear style. I like how the red areas are glossy and reflective, and I especially like the thunderbolt on the back. 9 out of 10. The Mystic Marvel outfit is based off an issue from the Champion series. In this story, the team is placed into the weird world reality that alters their memories, powers, and abilities to fit the mystical medieval setting. This one has a very unique aesthetic to it, with the whole wizard thing she's got going on. The cape looks cool in motion, I like how vibrant the colors are. I'm not a huge fantasy guy, but I do think this one looks cool. 8 out of 10. The Magnificent Miss Marvel is based off Kamala's new costume from the series of the same name. The suit was essentially Kamala's version of Spider-Man's symbiote costume, being a short-lived outfit that the character had to stop using since the costume was alive and had different goals than his wearer. The details are a little different, since this suit is a nanotech AI that becomes fully autonomous when separated from Kamala, and not a goopy alien that always needs a host like the Venom symbiote. But it's basically the same thing. The suit itself is too much? There's too many things going on here. In the books, I think it was pushing the boundaries of overdesign, but it didn't quite reach it. Here though, I think they did it. For me, it's mostly the added bits of neon blue that break up parts of the costume. The yellow shape on the front, that is kind of the lightning bolt, has been broken up in a more realistic way, removing the form-fitting, smart metal appearance it had in the books. Finally, the metal-tipped scarf is way more flaccid here. It's an alright adaptation of an alright suit, so I'll give it a 7. Okay, but look at the promo image they used for this though, what is that facial expression? The last suit we have for Kamala is her outfit from the Disney Plus Miss Marvel show. I really don't like this costume. This is absolutely over-designed. On her chest there are four different blue areas. One of them is smooth and the other three have the same pattern on them, but the pattern is colored differently in each one, with each area being separated by a gold line. Why? It's the same thing with her legs too, as there are three different shades of red. There is no reason this suit needed to be doing all that. The color problems were not as noticeable in the show, since the suit is mostly seen at night, so you honestly don't get that good of a look at it, but it's impossible to ignore here. I also really don't like the shoes. I remember when I saw the set photos for this show, I thought that the shoes were just something the actress was wearing in between takes. I didn't think it was something that was actually a part of the outfit. It just makes it look incomplete, which I'm sure was the point, but I don't like it. There is a legitimate error with this suit in the game, as the ankles don't stretch properly. Instead, the model breaks at this point, sometimes with a black bar being visible in the empty space. I don't know how they even got this wrong, as several other costumes were able to do this correctly. As far as I know, this is the only suit that has this issue. Overall, I'd give the suit a 6. It's not awful, it's just a needlessly complicated adaptation of a simple suit that this very game proved could look good in 3D without all these extra embellishments.
Also, since this game didn't adapt to the hard light powers she had in the show for this suit, this is the only time you'll be seeing the MCU suit stretch and shift in size with Kamala's original powers. I guess I should probably mention my thoughts on Kamala's new costume in the Marvels movie. I actually like that one a lot more than this. I think the problem people are having is that they compare the new suit to Kamala's original comic costume, but this is really a different costume entirely and should be judged as a separate thing. I think this one is actually simpler than the outfit from the show, and the flatter colors are easier on the eyes. The color scheme also reminds me of some of the Ultraman designs, which I think is cool. I do wish the boots were blue though, as I think the lower body has too much red. And that's all. Here's my tier list rating of Kamala's outfits. The link will be in the description for the tier maker website for you to make your own if you want to. Overall, I think most of Kamala's outfits are rather uninteresting. Just like Black Widow, Kamala really only has two different types of costumes, casual clothing and variations of her typical hero suit. Unlike Black Widow, this actually makes sense for Kamala. She's been around for far less time and has had far fewer costumes in the books. Also, unlike Black Widow, Kamala actually has several costumes that I'd consider to be worth using. Part of this is due to Kamala generally having a better comic costume design than Black Widow, but I also think it has to do with these developers clearly liking Kamala more than most of the other characters. I don't have any suggestions for what costume she should have had, because, like I said, Kamala hasn't been around too long, so she hasn't had that many costumes. Her main outfit from the books was really the only one that mattered, and they actually did a good job with it, so I'm satisfied. Instead, I'll take this time to list costumes I would've wanted to see for other characters that I didn't do this for previously, those being the Thors, Spider-Man, Captain America, and Iron Man. For Jane Thor, I have no notes. She has all her main suits, and they all look good. For Thor, a good version of the ultimate outfit would be cool. The one in the game is, in my opinion, not that great, so I'd like one that stuck closer to the design in the books, even if it didn't have the correct hammer. The post-herald Donny Cates King Thor outfit is probably my favorite look from the comics, so that would have been nice to see. A good version of the modern suit that spaces its chest circles better and doesn't have stupid pyramid armor for no reason, that'd have been nice. And there was a bit in the comics after the Jane Thor story where Thor became worthy again, and he had short hair, a prosthetic arm, and a gold hammer. This look would have been cool for the gold hammer alone. For Spider-Man, like I said in my video on him, it seems like the character was tied down with legal problems that prevented them from adding in costumes that were related to other characters. So all the suits I want to see are things that probably would have been impossible to actually have in this game. The 2099 suit, I think, doesn't need an explanation. I actually really like the superior Spider-Man suit, and I would have liked to have seen that here. Really awesome that's going to be in Spider-Man 2, by the way. And of course, the symbiote costume is a favorite of mine. I remember when Spider-Man first released in this game, people were huffing so much copium saying that they were just holding off on releasing the symbiote suit. Ah, those poor naive souls. When it comes to Captain America, the number one costume I wanted for him was the US agent suit. A huge issue of Steve's design in this game is that he looks more like John Walker, the US agent. I've even gotten a lot of comments saying the same thing, so I'm not alone in this thought. Because of this, I think a good US agent suit would actually be really fitting for this version of the character. Specifically, I'd want the suit to look how it did when drawn by Daniel Acuna in the Sam Wilson Captain America book. In my opinion, that's the coolest US agent has ever looked. Give it a proper shield, with the black in the center, and boom. That's a good suit. Keeping on the John Walker idea, the next suit I'd like is Walker's Captain America outfit from the Falcon and the Winter Soldier TV show. It's a colorful and unique design, so I think it'd be cool. Also, it would've been the only way to get the slightly different shield that Steve gives to Sam in Endgame. The suit from Age of Ultron is pretty similar to a lot of Steve's suits from the later movies, but the added color and white areas on the arms make it stand out. Also, did you know that Captain America in this game uses magnets to hold the shield? He doesn't have the typical straps on the shield that are in most versions of Captain America. So the Age of Ultron suit would be the only MCU suit that uses wrist-mounted magnets like this game's version of Cap. Finally, the last suit I'd want is a good version of his classic suit or the ultimate suit. Really, I just want something that gives me the feeling of being the typical version of Cap. There are a few attempts at the classic Captain America suit in this game, but none of them really do it for me. So more faithful adaptations of the classic suit or the ultimate suit I think would be really good additions. Lastly, we have the character that I first made a video on, 
Iron Man. The first one I'd want for him is an actual attempt at the superior armor. The one they put in the game, in addition to being a lazy asset flip, doesn't look nearly as cool as the design from the books. The sleek, smartphone-esque aesthetic the suit had in the books is not really present in their version of the suit. Also, I think it looked better with the helmet, partially because I think the suit generally looks better with it, but also because I don't like looking at this Tony's face. The next one I'd want is the actual suit from the Ultimates, the one he wore for much of that universe's existence, and not the one from the non-canon miniseries. The Model 70 is a modern update to the classic suit that I think looks really cool. This game's illustrious suit is also a modern reinterpretation of the classic suit, and while it's not bad, the Model 70 just looks way better. Even though it was designed by Alex Ross, I actually don't like how he draws the suit. He always draws the mask to leave room for the nose, and that looks a little goofy to me. I think Keifu is the best person to draw the suit, so I would have liked for it to look like that. And the suit I most wanted for Iron Man is the Model 25, aka the Pentagon armor. You might think that this is the extremist suit, but it's not. This is the extremist suit, and while the design is similar, they are different. Although I understand the confusion, as often artists will get confused and conflate the two armors together. And while I do like the extremist suit, I wouldn't actually want it in this game, mostly because from behind, there's basically no yellow or gold on it. It's pretty much completely red, and since you will be mostly seeing the characters from the back in a video game like this, it wouldn't be that visually interesting. But the main reason I want the Pentagon armor is nostalgia. When I was a kid, this was the suit that was on Marvel's merchandise. This was the suit that was in the comics. So this suit means a lot to me, and I'd like to see it show up again sometime. And that's all of that. Now we're here at the end. The end of the road I started us on. When I made the video discussing Iron Man's costumes, I didn't intend for it to become a series. That video was more of a follow-up to my hour and a half long video discussing the Avengers game overall. I felt like I hadn't fully aired my frustrations with the game's costume design, so I made that video. But now I've done one for every character, looked through all their suits, and hopefully I've done an adequate job explaining why I do or don't like them. I hope it's now become clear that I think the costume design of Marvel's Avengers is generally awful, with very few exceptions. I guess I should do a bit of summary. I know people are going to ask stuff like who has the best costumes, what the worst suit in the game is overall, stuff like that. I still think that Jane has the best costumes overall and that Kate Bishop has the worst. It really is as simple as this. Jane is the only character that consistently looks like a superhero throughout all of her costumes. She has this large Amazonian body type that none of the other characters can compete with, and her outfits don't shy away from the comic book flair that really makes these outfits pop. Kate, on the other hand, is the character that practically never looks like a superhero. All of her outfits are very mundane and very boring. As far as the best and worst costumes, if you've seen the Hawkeye video, then you know that the only suit I ever gave a zero to was Hawkeye's original Endgame costume. The extreme apathy that drips off that outfit is so appalling, and because they released a fixed version later, there is no reason at all to ever use that one. The best costume, for me, is a tie between Captain America's Endgame suit and Iron Man's Mark III. While those suits have their problems, they're the ones that most elicit that feeling of being that character. And you might say, well, whoa, didn't you give Kamala's trending outfit a 10? Isn't that the higher score you've given? And yeah, I think that is probably the best adaptation. It's the only suit I don't really have any problem with at all. But... I just don't like Kamala that much as a character. I definitely like her more now than when I started doing this because I read all of her solo comic issues, but I don't know, I still don't like her that much. I know some people are gonna be like, oh, you didn't like Jane, you didn't like Kate, you don't like Black Widow, you don't like Kamala. Is Dorito God sexist? And no, I'm not, so don't you dare try to pin that evil on me. But just look at the selection of women in this game. You have Black Widow, who is essentially a normal human being with firearms. Jane Thor, who is just Thor, but a woman. Kate, who is just Hawkeye, but a woman. And Kamala, who's just Mr. Fantastic, but less useful. So if these are my options, is it really that surprising that I don't like any of them? I would have loved to have played as the Wasp. In my big, like, hour-long Avengers video, I mentioned how bizarre it is that the Wasp doesn't even get mentioned in the main campaign. She's one of the founding members of the team. In the comic book, she's the character who gave the team its name, and she's not in this game. 
Even though I don't like her character too much, I think the Scarlet Witch would have been a way better addition. I don't like her as a character because I feel like writers don't really know what to do with her, so they'll be like, oh, she's crazy now, and just kind of reset everything about her, which must be frustrating for fans of the character. But visually, I think she's had a ton of great designs, and I think her powers are really interesting. And this next one's a bit of a free space because everybody likes this character, but Storm from the X-Men. Would have loved to have played a Storm. I know some people will say, oh, but she's an X-Men character. Yeah, 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 whatever. Everyone in the books has been an Avenger at some point, so I'm sure it's fine. Hell, Spider-Man's villain Sandman was an Avenger at some point, so everyone's been an Avenger. It's fine. I'm sure if they really wanted to, they probably could have added her in later at some point. Anyway, gigantic tangent aside, I'd like to say thanks to the website Gamer Escape, where I got a lot of the costume screenshots from. Not all of them, obviously, since I had to take a lot of them myself, but they were really the only website that tried to keep up to date with the game's costumes as time went on, which made them a very helpful resource. More importantly, I'd like to say thanks to viewers like you, who supported me and made these videos possible. Looking to the future, I probably won't be doing any more of this costume stuff. I'll do one on Guardians because I think it serves as a nice counterpoint to this game, and I'll do one on Spider-Man because I am psychotically obsessed with Spider-Man, but outside of that, probably not. And the reason for this is simple. The whole reason I even did these videos for Avengers is that Avengers is unique in how awful its art design is and in how it adapts its costumes from the comic books, in how it portrays these characters, just in general. No other game does what Avengers does. No other game has such blatant disregard for its source material. No other game so fundamentally misunderstands the appeal of superhero costume design. So really when it comes to other games that I don't have that same passion, that same anger I think that you may have felt with these Avengers videos, because in all the other games they understood the assignment. They just make the characters look the way they're supposed to. Because I understand that with these videos it might seem like I'm this super nitpicky guy who only likes a very specific type of thing, but that's really not true. I'm exceptionally easy to please. I, I really am. It's only Avengers that so consistently manages to screw things up. In Avengers, for the most part, the characters don't look like superheroes, and as a consequence, oftentimes they don't really look like the actual character they're supposed to be. When I look at Captain America, I don't see Captain America, I see a guy who is just using some old police gear he found. When I look at Thor, I don't see the Viking God of Thunder, I see a guy in some Renfair armor. And you know, I could go on, but that, that's, that's the whole problem with Avengers suit design. No other game has that issue. In other games, even if the suits are bad, they're still bad superhero costumes. In Avengers, they oftentimes don't even reach that bar of being a superhero suit. They're oftentimes just repurposed clothing. That's what makes Avengers character design so unbelievably lame. And that's, like I said, that's why I just don't have that same anger and, and, and passion for other games when looking at their costumes. And I know now that everything is free in Avengers, but there was a time when a lot of the suits in Avengers cost money, a, a decent amount of money, and that's another thing that just angered me. That's why I, I made that Iron Man video, because, you know, suits like the Superior costume or the Prometheum one were sold originally for $15, and they look almost nothing like their actual comic book counterparts, and that, that pissed me off. That's part of the whole reason I made these videos to start with, was it was just that initial anger, that reaction I had to not only the lack of effort, the lack of quality of the skins, not just the price tag associated with them, but also the fact that there were people who were okay with it, people that supported it, and, and that, that drove me up the wall, man, that made me so, so angry. And other games just don't do that. Like in Midnight Suns, some of the costumes, the additional suits are paid only, but they're like, what, like three dollars, so who really cares? Or, you know, Arkham Knight had some costumes that were, what, like, two bucks each? Big whoop. But in Avengers, where, you know, the price tag was 10, 15 bucks, like, yeah, that, that pissed me off. I'd like to talk about games and comics as a whole, and not just their visual aspects. I hope you'll stick around for that. With all that said, remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that, and I'll see you next time. Also, follow me on Twitter.